Hi there. Morning. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello, yes. Thank you very much. Just checking my new headset. Oh, no. It's in a cave. It looks very good. Or is it by the foot of a tree? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a very old picture. <laughs> very old. That's why I keep it. It gives a better outlook. <laughs> and well, it's very, very good. Very for now, it looks like we're all feel like we're living in that, really. <laughs> but it's lovely with the nature bits. Nice. Yeah. And how are you, Antonio? How is it? I'm doing well. Um, we're all doing well in the family. Uh, we're lucky enough to be able to work from home at the moment, mm -hmm. and, and the kids are homeschooled. Um, yeah, so it's, it's all going good. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we just uh, heard about the the fire at the college, obviously, two years ago. Yeah, I think we're very lucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And actually, I, I came to realize that it was intentional, um, likely. Well, likely. So that's why they're yeah. gathering intelligence now, if anybody knows anything. Yeah. yeah. Ed, for this one, is it is it you or Yvonne? That, have you got something to share from the survey results? Would it be your I think it's um, Yvonne. She's been working on the data, so I've been passing it to Yvonne. So I don't know what she's got because she hasn't spoken to me about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in a film studio now. Is that your background? You're in the... No, this is another customer's uh, property that we did <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> this is a... Uh, new marketing on us. <laughs> yeah, too right. <laughs> um, I've, I've come in from a... We have a networking business business meeting and uh, this is just over from me doing my one minute, um, one minute presentation. Um, this is a... a a cinema in a basement of a old church that was converted oh. to a house. Well, it was, a, it was, it's a long story, but yeah, it used to be a care home. Um, yeah. and then the care home went bust. They sold the property to a developer who was from Thailand. Um, that uh, Thailand guy converted the whole place into a really, really expensive living area, a few bedrooms, a couple of bits and pieces, cinema. Um, a nice sort of like bar area which is behind. got the Histon Fryer opening today um, they've taken a lot of care and consideration into how they're going to open and what safeguarding they've put in place um, I'm going to pop down there later when they do open and just um, support them and help them with any safeguarding Oh, Nick, you've just uh, frozen. Oh, you're back with us now. Thank you. Uh, okay, I've just left my wife by and joined 4G. Um, so, yeah, uh, in case anybody missed anything, um, History Prize opening and wish them all the best. Um, and I'll be there to support them with any help that they might need with safeguarding. Um, on the pallet scheme, um, Will Sheeling has been doing a fantastic job of picking up the food on the pallets and dropping it off with um, Salvation Army. Um, but yes, a couple of days ago, he reached out for help. So I've now got a team of four highly motivated, dedicated, and um, hopefully soon self-managing uh, people picking the pallets up. We've divided them into two areas and each person is going to do one area every other day. So it shouldn't be too onerous for any particular one person. Uh, the people who have who put their hands up and who are going to be doing it are Muriel Porter, um, Vida Burton, and Sarah Davy, along with Will Sheeling. So, big shout out to those guys. Um, thanks for all your help. Uh, we might never meet the people that the help is going to, but um, I'm pretty sure, and I've never met them either. But I'm pretty sure that the guys at the Salvation Army and Georgina will and um, Neil Davis will tell you that um, that help is greatly appreciated. On the prescriptions, um, we're 
taking more calls most days. I think a couple of days ago we um, hit a new record of I can't remember if it's 12 or 14, but um, we're picking lots of prescriptions up um, and keep pointing people our way. Um, that we can scale that. In fact, we have done already. We've moved from two people taking calls to three so that um, we've got cover if anybody can't make it on one particular day. Um, those people are Morag Goodwin, Hannah Steeling, and now Eileen Andrews. So again, thanks to you guys for delivering a great service, which is greatly appreciated by those who need it. Um, and I think that's me now on the updates. Oh, one more thing. Um, I've been doing a Meals on Wheels thing, so Ethel Dread Care Home, and again, thanks to them very much. They're currently um, giving, um, making four additional meals per day for me, which are going out to two different households, um, to people who, again, need the help. Um, if any of the street coordinators know of a family that either needs a meal on a regular basis or just for a break, I know I've mentioned this before, but just to give you know people who might be struggling a little bit just a bit of a break for a day or a few days or even the whole week, um, please let me know and I can organise them a hot meal um, at lunchtime. And that's me. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Okay, um, Don, on to you as volunteer liaison. Okay, uh, not a huge amount to report. Um, the, the, we've got co coordinator coverage everywhere. One has changed this week. But that's it. That, that was well done. Um, we've uh, written five lines notes out of six, and the last one will be about the holding residents, holding data on residents, personal data. Uh, and that's the last one we have planned to issue. So I guess uh, from volunteer liaison uh, point of view now, it's, it's over to you. What, what is it that you like from us? What guidance? What do you think we are not aware of that is going on on the street and we need to be getting involved? So I think it's over to you guys from now on. That's, that, that's it for me. Uh, are you getting information and questions coming in, Don? Yes, qu questions every day, but um, now a, a, a very manageable few. Um, so, uh, and no, no real recurrent themes. So it's more uh, uh, one-offs rather than, you know, um, several people asking the same question. So, and Don, it's Pippa here. So just, um, as I understand, those guidance notes are now on the highcovid19.online website. That's right, they all are. All, all the ones that have been issued are, yes. Fantastic. All right, and Joe, how, how are you getting on? What, what's life like in your world? <laughs> life has been very quiet at this end of the phone. Um, we've got a new extra extensions on the phone line. So for those that don't know, on the 320-420 number, when you phone in, the options number one are for the church, Number two is for the COVID line explicitly, which then gives you options for one for general, which comes through to me, two for volunteer liaison for um, Don, or three for business coordinator through to Nick. And then on the initial stage, options three would be for prescriptions, number four would be for well mental well-being, and number five would be food parcels. So I think a lot of people are going to different branches now and not coming through to me, but obviously I'm always here if volunteers want to talk to me and I've got... I might have answers sometimes that Don doesn't, but obviously contact who you think is the best to answer your call. But I'm here for anybody, those on the ground or those coordinators. There you go, that'll do. Thank you, Joe. that's great, thank you. Um, Pippa, do you, do you want to go next and then we'll, uh, Ed can show a bit of the survey data? Okay, good, no, so from the, just on the South Cam side, what's been happening is making sure that all businesses, especially small businesses, do apply for the £10,000 um, business loan, the, the grant, sorry, the business grant. And we've been able to reach almost all of those in the village that hadn't originally applied. Um, and everyone's been really appreciative because that's, that's, they hadn't necessarily understood that they were eligible for that. So that, that's been very, very good. Um, and then just as we were mentioning in terms of um, the VE Day coming up, 
and we were talking about this in the core team and we, we just want to make sure that you know the general message i think we feel is everybody have a nice time you know enjoy it in the ways that you're thinking about doing but just keep to the social social distancing guidelines and and in that way it will be pleasant for everybody um, and i spoke to our police sergeant as well and they just said yeah just don't let it go too far just make sure everyone sticks to the social distancing guidelines um, so that's it enjoy it and be safe Thank you, Pippa. Thank you. Um, okay, and now going to Ed. Do, Ed, do you want to just share some of the data, or do you want to talk to? Yeah, it? no. What, let me what? share. Let me share uh, this. It's uh, it's a bit rough and ready because obviously we um, we've been still working through the data. So we had um, ninety three responses. Um, we'll ignore that one, um, and we can go down to so primary role. So we had uh, sixty eight uh, street coordinators um fill in the survey 19 street volunteers and other um we'll find out what the other are when we do a bit more of analysis um which uh yvonne's got a copy and i have a copy of that out of it um the uh one of the questions was uh, if there was um people that wanted to become a deputy um they could fill this in and we've passed that information on to don i know haven't we yvonne so Absolutely. um and then, um, how, yeah, yeah, and then, and then we sort of asked how people uh, were getting on um, and feeling. So how the street is, response is getting on, and and also um, how people feel about that. Um, so you know, we're getting like a response of ninety three on both of those with a four point three seven rating. So I think you know we can see that what we're doing is is effective and people feel happy that we're we're moving in the right direction um, and then we had um, this is uh, question 15 was how are you coping so far in your role um, I think the general thing is that people are are getting a few responses but they're not inundated so um, you know the data shows that it, it's all very good that we're managing to cope um, this was quite a clever one um, which was about the communication um, within the street um, and it shows that WhatsApp is uh, and telephone are front runners um, with email uh, then followed by um, Facebook and, and other, other means. So we know that WhatsApp groups um, have been popping up around the village um, for their streets and that seems to be the most effective communication method through, through that. Um, and then this was uh, the question 17 was what, what generally people are doing within their street coordinator roles. So from shopping for self-isolation, picking up prescriptions, you know, even just to the point of phoning someone to make sure they're okay. Um, so we've picked all of that up. Um, this will be sort of an anal analyzed a little bit more. Um, we did ask a question, which is basically um, if people have had COVID-19 or suffered symptoms or been admitted to hospital or known anyone that has passed away within the village. Um, the results from that seems to tie in with the results that came through from uh, the county. Um, I think it was a, a, a office of national statistics which said about deaths within uh, certain areas and it seems to tie up with, with what we saw on that as well. So that's it really. So, um, but we will analyze that data a bit more and anyone who needed data out of that has been passed that information to then be able to do their, their particular part of the coordination. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if I could say something in, in response to that, the, um, the, the pie chart that showed that some, uh, some streets were had a lot of, lot of uh, support, requests for support that they were coping with. Unsurprisingly, they're generally the ones where there's a lot of elderly. Um, and while they're all coping, I'm sure that they would all like some more support. Um, so if you have any volunteers in your networks that are underutilized, we might be able to offer support to a local area where there is a, where a street coordinator is either working on their own or with very little support and could do with some more. So please let me know about that. Thank you. And, and Don, that can be done by the central helpline now? It can, yep. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. All right. So, um, Nikki, we've got your question and um, 
from nice to meet you yesterday um so do you want to ask your question um I'd love to be able to answer it, as I've said. Oh, I ask not... it. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought I said ask. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I suppose my concern, particularly trying to assist St Audrey's Close, is trying to predict the future. How are the street coordinator and volunteer roles going to be stretched and challenged in not just weeks, but future months? It's just that simple. And yeah. I'm saying my, my, crystal, my crystal ball is cloudy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Pepper, is there I, anything you like? No, I just think on, on that one, I think we are looking in the core team, we're starting to look at, you know, what is as we're looking longer term. And, and I think that should be the subject of one of our volunteer meetings with people coming up with ideas of, you know, how we keep that going. How, how much do we keep it going? Who keeps it going? Um, but definitely this just not sort of suddenly stopping. Um, but also having a sense of, how much how much longer can we continue it and in what form and what will the future needs i think you're right we can't predict but we do actually have a lot of statutory agencies like the district and county who are looking at sort of macro in terms of our area you know different indicators around finance um mental health health in general and other things like that so perhaps we could have a specific section of one of the volunteer meetings looking at that and, and everybody discussing that but as you say, a little bit, maybe a bit long, you know, another couple of weeks. Thank you, Pippa. Yes. Thank you, Yvonne. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. I just want to add, Nikki, you know, you raised something yesterday that uh, to me that was, you know, really important. So all of those ideas that we get, all of those suggestions, all of those things that you're thinking about should definitely be part of a volunteer meeting going forward. Um, you know, really important. Um, the government have proved they don't have a crystal ball either. Um, but that neighbourhood on the ground is really important to get in place. Thank you. It's a great question. And one um, other point, just thinking ahead, Yvonne and Pippa, is as some of us attempt to get back to normal working practice, the team reduces in size and you need more re recruits coming up from underneath to fill the spaces. So Don has already mentioned that one street coordinator had to be replaced. I've had to replace volunteers because they've been self-isolating and the current structure may well have to be rebuilt and extended. That's it, over and out. Thank you, that's great, thank you. Um, and then Rachel Bircher, a longer term work school arrangements are going to change which will affect the availability of uh, volunteers. Rachel, does that that add to Nikki's point. Rachel, do you want to speak? Are you on mute? Can you see her, Ed? So she's saying yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't hear. Sorry. Um, and then from Nicole. Um, Nicole, do you want to just expand upon your point of uh, local citizens assembly? Um, hi. Um, no, it's just struck me. Hi. I've been covering Homefield Close and I've, I live on in Pinkton Lane and, you know, it is right underneath my nose, really. And I have been quite shocked at the level of poverty and deprivation and the state of people's homes and stuff. And um, so I just think it'd be nice to be able to plan something move for, moving forward in the long term, because we've obviously got such a lot of well-being and kind of wealth in this village and, and people keen to do something, maybe some sort of um, buddying scheme with families or isolate people that really need something. Um, but anyway, we'd need to talk about this, maybe put together a group of people from all different branches of the village to discuss it moving forward. It seems such a shame to drop this now we've, you know, put one foot forward. Mm. Absolutely. And we do have the befriending team in the village, you know, that have um, been there for some while. So that could potentially mm. be built on uh, Nicole. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so Rachel, for example, at the moment, I can be very flexible. This will change. Um, yeah, understood, Rachel. And I think that's the same for a number of, of people. Also, um, Samantha Upchurch. Hi, Samantha. Also longer term, some will be self-isolating unpredictably in future and may need support with food so that's something that um, Neil is looking at with his team and also Nick um, is leading the uh, with Neil and Georgina Nick tell me if I get it wrong but 
um, they're working together on the food parcels and the pallets that um, Nick mentioned. Um, I can't hear the school homeschool noise in the background, Rachel, so that's fine. Um, Rob, I'll come, uh, come back to you, Nick. Um, just lovely idea, like an extended neighbourhood scheme that's building on Nicole's. Nick, do you want to add anything? Um, I don't think so, but if anybody, I mean, if we need to scale our operation, we, we can do that. That's not a problem at all. So if you um, need more prescriptions or um, uh, food parcels or, um, or people need care in the community because they've slipped through the social net, then, then we can do that. We can, if we haven't already got something in place, we can very quickly and easily get something in place. Um, there's lots of very helpful people replying to me right now, actually, um, privately, um, offering help, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, any, if, if there's any social care that's needed, I'm sure we can work something out. Um, whether that's getting the proper um, organisations involved um, through the count, um, county council and whatever, or whether it's us locally doing it ourselves, we can, we can do that. Um, it's not a problem. And, um, and Nick, you'll, you'll link up those private um, emails with the, the, the data we have on volunteers so that we can make sure that we can utilise that information where it's been approved, etc. Yeah, yeah, I've got them all saved um, for myself, um, for people I can reach out to, so that's, that's great. Right, um, Pippa, uh, so Pippa, do you want to just say what you've written here? Um, that was sort yeah. of picking up on Nicole's thing and, and also I saw um, as well from Georgie, uh, no, for Rob um, Simmons, but I, I think it again, it's about how we look forwards and it is, it is incredible. I think we're all feeling um, just the, the gift that it is to be better connected even on our streets and as a community and as Nicole was saying realizing that we have pockets of inequality in our village and how we can care for each other and we've said that our principle is safe and connected so it's just saying yeah let, let's keep that going forward so that we can address it together um, and I think it's also linked to some of the the other issues that that, that have been raised around better air quality um, some of those greener issues which are also linked to health variants and, and variables for different people so I just think it's a bigger wider conversation that we can perhaps have as we're moving forward with inequality being one of those issues at the fore but also health and uh, perhaps that greener side of, of life as well. Lovely thank you Pippa and, and that longer term is definitely something that we've started to look at um, as well as you know we've always looked at this full collaboration so the fact that you guys can actually feed into what we're doing um, and I agree Nicole you know this benefits all of our organizations that are working together high friends the parish council the Salvation Army the Council of Churches currently chaired by the Salvation Army so taking that forward and keeping that community building on that community um, is really important and, and if I could just bring come back again and go on so I think it's that the our wonderful police sergeant Emma Hilson who is really strong on community resilience one of their um, wishes and aspirations is that this is also so Rob was mentioning about the good neighbor scheme and they're also interested in how to build back the neighborhood watch scheme um, around the whole community as well and they'd like to talk to us about that so we could you know bring that into to that element as well um, and that I see you know and then others are saying and do that whilst we're also looking at the need to have perhaps a larger group of volunteers and a larger rota because in some ways some of these issues will just get more and more difficult for some members of our community um, as Samantha was mentioning that so you maybe want to talk about that Samantha and Lucy as well Sam, do you want to, to raise that point? Okay, okay. Um, and, um, okay, so um, uh, we've also got um, from, I think it's Julie Jocelyn. Julie, is that right? Yeah, so um, 
the fact that older people do not feel vulnerable um, and we're seeing that a lot and you know how we respect that and you know here we are we're just we're here to support as and when needed um, uh, that's that's the issue there let me go on uh, post lockdown some vulnerable people will have the same needs as they and will need to be remembered absolutely if the government app does go ahead um, we could expect there to be a high coverage here but based on numbers of smartphones attitudes to to data security um, so that's something that we will see potentially in the next week brian do you want to raise that point are you on mute I'm, yeah i was muted i was just thinking that Thanks, if Julie. that comes out in a couple of weeks time it may mean a lot more people going in and out of self-isolation on the initial notice the way they're talking about letting people know that someone possibly that they've been in contact with and then letting them know it's all clear um there will be lots of panics with people going to us say oh I, I didn't do this i didn't tell i didn't leave this here i need to i need to post this or whatever um and then two days time most of them will be out again and the panic will be gone and be somebody else and this is going to cause a different demand than the one we're getting now which is a, a much more longer term Good. And, and can, um, Ed, would you be able to just show again, there's been a couple of requests for the slide where, of the self-reporting to the survey around the status of um, COVID illness or mortality in the village? Yeah. This one. So in the first one, recovered from, we're assuming therefore that those are ones that um, have been diagnosed, whether second suffered symptoms, presumably not tested, or or do we know if any have been tested? We don't know that. We didn't answer that question. Yeah. Um, I think um, Yvonne and myself have been talking about doing a, a wider survey that is actually not for volunteers, which is for the wider community. So taking some of these questions and putting them into a wider survey to see what the community aspect is. Yeah, and I think than this was directed for volunteers. Again, about, about sort of safeguarding, and Siobhan's on the line. I don't know, Siobhan, if you want to talk to her. I know there's, there is, um, in terms of the ONS, there's definitely concern about it being too specific location-wise in case of concerns or, you know, panic or any kind of retribution or side of that. So, yeah, um, it's obviously anonymous, and, and, and we have to be very careful about location of that, but somehow also gather data, which is... You know, it's just good to understand. Yeah, thanks, Pippa. Nothing much to add Add there. Just uh, I think um, it's a, a lot of people like myself will have very little knowledge of anybody having COVID-19 in the village, and it's just interesting to know. Yeah, the, the, the uh, results for this were anonymized as well. So if we look at the results for that, they were all anonymized um, on purpose. Yeah. So we didn't take any uh, potential data uh, and, and share it. That's why that one was basically anonymized on that result. Yeah. Just just to say, um, John Gooch, that's a really good question. Um, we'll come back to you offline, and I know you can help us with this, but um, it's a really important question around governance um, that we're making sure we need to try and make sure that this data is held as securely, uh, Siobhan, across all um, across all um, parishes. As possible okay and and John right. just to come back with you on that one we discussed it in the core team this morning and we hope that by next volunteer meeting we would there just have a statement around clarifying what the governance is of all types of data and policy documents and how they're being shared okay all right okay uh, Joe Roach um, okay uh, thanks, Joe. That obviously doesn't show how those proportions relate to po uh, population, i.e. how many may feel they've had it. No, absolutely. It doesn't cover that. Okay. All right. If there's no other questions, um, we'll finish for today. But what we want to do is keep having these weekly meetings where we do have a topic like longer term. We'll extend the meetings and take as long as you need. Um, but we will keep giving you updates um, um, via Don on the volunteer front, via Nick on the business front. And so we will keep you updated as a team. 
if there's anything you would like to see in terms of how we communicate, um, do let us know um, and we'll make sure um, that we keep you posted. Um, but thanks for everyone for attending. Um, how many did we have, Ed? Uh, it went up to 63. 63. Um, and thanks, Siobhan, also for attending um, for South Cams. Martin, um, it would be useful to know also if people have desisted going to hospital because of fear of COVID. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry to hear about Arga's uncle. Very sorry. Um, thank you, um, Martin. We'll, we'll take that question into account. Um, and Rob, thank you very much um, for your last statement. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, gang. Bye-bye.